Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Our topic for today's devotion is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Before we proceed, let us pray. Your name is Haya. Above all thy names, your name is Jesus, your name is Lord, your name is higher. Above all thy names, your name is Jesus. And your name is Lord. Our Heavenly Father Almighty, indeed your name is Jesus, and your name is Lord, and your name is higher. Father, indeed you are the Lamb. Father, as we study your word, Father, O Lord, teach us from your word. The traits of the Lamb, the attitudes and the habits of the Lamb, Father, what the Lamb carries, Father, give to us. By the power in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The topic once again. So Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Our text this morning. John chapter 1. Beginning to read from the 29th verse. John chapter 1 and from verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and see, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he had sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The topic once more, Jesus, the Lamb of God. I know most of us might have seen the Lamb. And most of us might have not seen the lamb, but we might have heard of the word, a lamb. A lamb is a cattle, an animal, which is known for its humility, its calmness, its just wonderfully calm. And that is why John called Jesus the lamb of God, because of the traits the master Jesus himself bears. Now John the Baptist describes Jesus in a unique way. By calling him the Lamb of God. By calling him the Lamb of God. The reference to a lamb easily reminds us of the blameless animal that sac sacrificed by the Jews. This is the blameless animal that is always sacrificed by the Jews to cleanse away their sins. And at this point... John seeing Jesus, referred to Jesus as the Lamb of God, as the blameless one of God, 
The one who has come to take away the sins of the world. The one who has come to take away the sins of the world. That was how John described him. I want to connect this to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 5. And from verse 1. Said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. A book written with and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth. Neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look down. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereon. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and of the midst of the elders stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Look at verse 12. It says, saying with a loud voice, What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. This was that same lamb, the lamb of God, the one who John referred to as the lamb of God. In this place, we see the same lamb being the only one worthy to open up the seal, to open up the scroll. In this same place, we see this lamb who has resurrected with power, with riches and with glory. Now when we talk of a lamb, what do we want to see out of a lamb? When someone is being referred to as a lamb, what is the main thing that you saw that you made to refer him as a lamb? Now one attribute of a lamb is that a lamb is humble. A lamb is humble, very humble. And Jesus was humble. Same should be with us, his followers. We should not just read it and let it be. But we should read it and allow it show forth from our lives. Following the steps of Jesus, being like that Lamb of God. Following the steps of Jesus, being like that Lamb of God. We should be humble and not allow our, our positions and our statues in the society to run into our heads and make us so proud. We should be humble just as the Lamb of God was. John speaking called him the Lamb of God. So the next day John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. This Lamb came to take the sins of the world. In all humility. The Lamb is not known to be a very strong or very tough animal. But yet, in its calmness, in its humbleness, it has been loved by all who sees it. It's blameless, spotless. And Jesus was just blameless and spotless as the Lamb and was referred to as the Lamb of God. How many of us, after studying our Bibles, after singing day in and day out, worships and praise to God, after coming out from the Sunday service, not the midweek service, not the Bible study service, still remain like Jesus. Still remain humble. Still remain calm. Still remain obedient. Just like the Lamb. How many of us who, after going to the church with one character, still in the society, they still know us with that same character. Instead of having a double standard, the Lamb never had, it will never have, and it can never have. We should not be saying something else and doing something else. That is not the life, not the attitude, not the attribute of a lamb. Now going back to Revelation chapter 5, where we saw in verse 12, it says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. 
And looking at where John saw Jesus and said, He's the Lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Now, if you still have your sins in you, it's because you've not received the Lamb. And if you've not received the Lamb, then you are not worthy to be a powerful Christian. You are not worthy to be a wealthy Christian. You are not worthy to be a wonderful Christian. Because the Lamb is the one that will take away the sin. And for you to be wealthy and wealthy in Christ, you must have the Lamb. For you to be powerful and powerful in Christ, you must have the Lamb. For you to be an outstanding believer, you must have the Lamb in you. The attributes of the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You want to be a blessed Christian? A blessed believer? And you don't have the lamb and every morning you disturb heaven? Heaven bless me, God bless me, Jesus bless me. My brother, even if you get blessed, ah, I'm not sure that blessing is from the Lord. Because you must have the lamb you must have Jesus in you. You must have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. You must have accepted him as Christ in you to have all these things. When Jesus is not in you, when you don't have the Lamb, then brother, you don't have power as a believer. That is even if you are a believer. And if you are a believer and you backslid that, go back to that secret place. Call forth upon the Lamb who is worthy to open up the seal. The one who was slain to receive power. Call forth on Him and ask Him to come into your life again. Ask Him to retake His place in your life. Let you do exploits like before. Let you go ahead as before. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God. And not having Him is having crisis in this world. Not having him is being powerless in this race and in this world. Not having him is being poor. You will keep battling with poverty. You will keep battling with different trials and different things that keep the cares of this world. Not having him, sicknesses and diseases we keep on disturbing you. But having Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, Jesus the Savior of the world, if only you can have him, if only you can open your hearts to him, if you open you can say, Jesus come into my life, Jesus come and take the best parts, take uh, the entire part of my life, Jesus I surrender to you, Jesus I hand over myself to you, take me, Jesus, come and take over my life, just surrender to Jesus, I want to offer you this opportunity. You listening, you viewing, you watching. Have you not accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior? You've not accepted the Lamb as your Lord and Savior? This Lamb of God is not in you. And you've been asking for a way, looking for the way, seeking for the way. This Lamb of the Lord, I want to tell you, He's the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. And the only way you can go which will be the right way is having the Lamb of the world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. When you have this Lamb, you will know the way. When you have this Lamb, you will know the truth. When you have this Lamb, ah, when you have this Lamb, you cannot miss part. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. I confess that I am a sinner. I say, I am sorry, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Take charge of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, congratulations to you. The announcement is that the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world has taken away your sin. And he now dwells in you. Father, we thank you for you said in your word, heaven rejoices over one soul that returns back to you. Father, as many that has prayed this prayer, 
Father, we say, oh Lord, let the rejoicing continue. Because indeed, these souls have returned back to God. Blessed be your day. The Lamb that comes to take away the sins of the world. Thank you for taking away their sins. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The good news to inform you is that now that you've received this Lamb, now that you have the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world, which take away the struggles of the world, which take away the, 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 the pains of the world, now that you have this Lamb, I want to tell you that now you are a powerful Christian. The devil no longer has the right to toy with you. The devil no longer has the right to win over you. The devil no longer has the right just to come into your life and mess it up. Now you are a believer. Now the Lamb of God has taken the way of the, 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 the sins of the world dwells in you. So you can no longer be tormented by the enemy. And if he comes, he will see the Lamb in you. And he will bow and he will turn away. Because the Lamb now dwells in you. Now you are a wealthy Christian. Your wealth is now stored in Christ. Your wealth is no longer stored where thieves, nor moths, nor rust can get them. Your wealth are now preserved by the power in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you have the Lamb of God in you. Now you have the Lamb of God in you. You are a glorious Christian. You are a blessed Christian. You are a wonderful Christian. You are an outstanding believer. Go in this day. might be outstanding as a believer. Because you have the Lamb of God in you. In your academics. In your studies. In your working places. Oh, I tell you, brethren. Ah, you are more than a conqueror. Because you have the Lamb of God in you. As you go. Go knowing that you are... One with Jesus. You are one who Jesus dwells in. And says one with God is majority. Do not bow to the things of this world anymore. Do not fall for the pleasures of this world anymore. Because the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world now dwells in you and has taken away the sins. I will not be happy to see you going back to your vomit. So please I beg you, brethren, as you've listened, Thank you for listening. Thank you for viewing. This viewing will not be in vain. This war this morning will dwell in you richly. And you will go out fully loaded because the Lamb dwells in you. You will go out fully loaded because the Lamb reigns in you. In your working places, when the people see you, they will know indeed that the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world now dwells in you. You will no longer partake in the evil things of the world. When they bring evil money to share in the office, you will not share. You will tell them, I'm now a changed man. I have the Lamb of God in me. When they bring exam papers for you to buy as students to see the exam questions ahead of time, you will tell them, no, I now study my books because I have the Lamb of God in me. When they invite you to night parties and white parties where you will come and defy yourself at the temple of the Lord, you will tell them, no, I have repented. I'm a changed man. I'm a changed woman. I'm a changed, changed boy and a changed girl. I now have the Lamb of Christ in me. The Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. I no longer go for night parties. I no longer go for world day parties. I no longer attend such occasions where God is not known. So blessed is the man who dwelleth not in the seat of the scornful, nor sinners. Now you are blessed. Now you've de-associated yourself with the things of the world. The Lamb of God now dwells in you richly. And as the Lamb of God dwells in you, I want to tell you that you will see the traits of the Lamb. The trait of humility. You are the one who we are proud before. So proud, any small thing you call yourself first before God. Now that you have God in you, you will refer to God first. He's your all and in all. He's your one and only. You will refer to God first before yourself, before anyone. Pride has died in you in the name of Jesus. Humility has taken over in the name of Jesus. The traits of the Lamb now can be seen in you. Now can be seen in you. 
I pray for you that this remains permanent in the name of Jesus. That you no longer fall away by the wayside. That you continue to grow in the spirit and in the grace of God. That the Lord will continue to guide you day in and day out in the name of Jesus. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for listening. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, my, thank you viewers, thank you listeners for viewing. Thank you, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord be with you. As you go, the Lord go with you. Go in this thy might, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.